Five Lessons from Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Now, this is a super popular book and one that I've read myself. I've given away to a lot of people. It's got a lot of valuable information. So I'm going to get to the top five things that I think anyone can get from the book. So this is just super quick. First thing is assets versus liabilities. Assets, assets are something that put money into your pocket. Like what puts money into your pocket? For example, think about when you go to a job, okay? You put in your hours, you get a paycheck. That's great, except that you've had to put in all those hours in order to get a paycheck, okay? But what if you had something where you didn't have to put the hours in? So I'll give you a super simple example. One is a bank account, okay? You put your money in the bank, at the end of the year, you get interest. Now, right now, as I'm recording this, interest rates are still pretty low. They are in the process of getting jacked up, so they might be higher by the time you watch this video. But generally, savings accounts pay the least amount of interest of any financial account you can get. However, my point is you put money into your account, you don't have to do anything else. You just live your life. And then at the end of the year, you have some interest. Okay, so that savings account is an asset. Now, let's say you write a book. For example, Robert Kiyosaki wrote this book. So this is an asset to him. He just sits back and does whatever, and he collects royalties from the book sales. Okay, so that's an asset. So an asset is anything that puts money into your pocket. A liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket. So think of a car. Most people buy cars with a car loan or some kind of financing. So they have to pay that every single month. That means that your car is a liability because it is taking money out of your pocket. You also have to pay insurance. You have to pay gas. Every so often your car needs servicing. Even if you uh, have paid off your car, you might think, oh, I paid off my car, like it's an asset. It's not an asset, it's still a liability because you still have to pay insurance, you still have to pay gas, the quality of the car degrades over time, you have to take it in for servicing. So for example, your car is a liability. Now here is the um, controversial part of Robert Kiyosaki's book. He says that your house is a liability, not an asset. Now, most of us think of our homes as assets because we buy the home, hopefully with a fixed rate mortgage, hopefully we have a steady mortgage payment, the value of the house goes up, the uh, mortgage payment stays the same, so our equity in the home grows. So for almost all people, they think of their home as an asset because it is something on your balance sheet and your ownership in the home grows. But Kiyosaki claims that your house is not an asset if it is the house where you live. And that is because you need to pay home insurance, Every home has things that go wrong, like you know your plumbing, your heating, etc. You have to heat and air condition your home. You know you have bills, whatever. So your primary home is not an asset. Now, if you own a house that you rented out, that would definitely be an asset because it becomes something that brings money to you. Okay, so that is the first lesson. Assets versus liabilities, okay? Just measure them in a very simple way. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money out of your pocket, okay? Second thing, pay yourself first. Just about everybody will say pay yourself first um, in order to become wealthy or in order to build up wealth or even just security. Pay yourself first. 
what does that mean? Okay, I've said that in so many of my uh, TikTok and YouTube videos and people don't know what it means. It just means treat yourself like a bill, okay? Treat yourself as some, something or somebody super important like I need to pay myself first before I pay my gas bill, my electric bill, my car loan, you know, my rent or mortgage, whatever. Uh, he says, look, everyone else will always have their hands out, but you need to pay yourself first. So put money into your savings or your investments. Very first thing you do when you get paid and then you pay everyone else, okay? That is something that I never learned from my parents when I was growing up. Uh, my parents did a great job otherwise of raising me, but I really wish I had learned that like right off the bat. It took me way too long to learn that. So I'm telling you, so you don't need to waste any time. So second lesson from Robert Kiyosaki, pay yourself first. It is critical. Okay, here's the third thing use leverage this is very different from another guy dave ramsey who i'm also a big fan of but you know we all have different opinions and two different financial gurus can definitely say different things so dave ramsey is totally anti-debt kiyosaki thinks that debt is a tool okay and whether you use it or not at least you should know the reasoning behind it so think of leverage what is leverage okay a lever is a tool you know how the classic example is you have like a rock and you've got a big stick or something and you use the big stick and you you just wedge it under and then with just a little bit of effort you can you can move that rock okay versus like going over and picking it up uh, like that okay use your imagination um the idea with leverage is you have a small effort to do a big thing so leverage generally means debt in the financial world because debt will allow you to put down a small amount of cash to buy a big thing and of course the classic example is buying a house you put down a small cash down payment you buy a big house how do you do it you use debt debt is your lever it's your tool okay so kiyosaki is a big believer in using leverage to buy assets okay so you have a small amount of cash your tool is the debt and you use it to buy an asset and the asset will put money in your pocket okay that's how it works now number four he is a big believer always think about taxes okay taxes are super important none of us can escape them um if you live in the united states as i do and you're at a certain income, your federal taxes might be around 30%, okay? There are also state taxes, depending on what state you are in, there may also be local taxes, who knows what else. But for purposes of this discussion, I'm just talking about federal income taxes, okay? So you think about like your 401k or your investments, and let's say, you have two hundred thousand dollars of investments and you say woohoo that's super great i have two hundred thousand dollars of investments kiyosaki says don't ignore the taxes okay so i mentioned thirty percent okay so thirty percent of a hundred thousand dollars would be thirty thousand dollars so thirty percent of two hundred thousand dollars would be sixty thousand dollars okay so instead of having two hundred thousand dollars you have a hundred and forty thousand dollars that's it sixty thousand dollars poof gone to the federal government okay so his point is you cannot ignore taxes they're super important you have to always use taxes in your favor 
Okay, so how to use taxes in your favor, that is beyond the scope of this video, but I just want you to know that taxes are super important, okay? And then number five, the fifth uh, lesson that I got from this book, and of course there are many others, is always ask how. So many times people, myself included, maybe you've asked yourself this, you see something, you say, man, I would really want that X, Y, Z, whatever it is, okay? And you say, oh, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. He says, what you should say is how. How can I afford it, okay? So if you want to cycle back to the big picture, uh, assets for, versus liability. So you get an asset, asset puts money into your pocket, then you have that um, money in your pocket and you can use leverage to buy a bigger asset that will put more money in your pocket. You always have to think about your taxes and then you always have to ask, how can I do this? How can I do this? It's all about how you think, okay? It's not where you come from, it's where you're going. It's how you think, the questions you ask yourself. So those are the five uh, big lessons that I got from this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I would really like to know what are the lessons that you have gotten from the book? Have you read the book? Or do you disagree or not disagree? Especially, I'd really like to hear about the debt. Do you think debt is a good tool or not? So uh, put your comments in the comments. I really want to hear them, and we will get back to them in another video. So thank you from Pamela Finance.